The whole point of doing this according to the short-term fuel trims is we want the ECU to be able to have the maximum amount of adjustment that it needs to get the fuel in where it wants to be. Hey right, guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I scale a MAF sensor. If you want to skip through the video to the bits that you're interested in, I'll put timestamps below. We're scaling the MAF sensor on the Octavia project. If you haven't been following along, it's uh, running a, a bit rich everywhere and especially at uh, low loads at lower RPMs. I've looked at the uh, short-term fuel trims on the an OBD scanner app and it shows that the ECU is fighting to take away fuel. So that suggests to me that there's something up with the, uh, the MAF sensor signal. It's telling the engine that there's a lot more air going into the engine than there actually is. So in the previous video, or one of the previous videos, I looked at checking the MAF sensor signal for consistency and quality. If you want to know the whole story to that, link to that video is also in the video description. So now we've got the MAF sensor signal where I want it, we can now start to scale the MAF sensor. So I am using a OBD Bluetooth dongle, the Car Scanner Android app. This is what you're seeing with the gauges on the right of the screen. And I'm logging the data that you see, so the short-term fuel trims, the AFRs, and the MAF sensor signal. I'm driving around, logging those, logging that data, going into the office, putting that data into Logworks, and then looking at the, um, the map to see what the problem is. And what we're trying to do, the goal is, is for the short-term fuel trims to be within plus or minus 5% of zero that would be ideal but if we can get them in within the, but if we can get them within plus or minus 10 uh, that would be also acceptable better than where it is at the moment so it's just a matter of doing the data logs analyzing the data making the adjustments to the piggyback ECU to reduce the math sensor signal going to the ECU doing more data logs see what effect that made analyze the data and then make adjustments again and just go and repeating that circle round and round until we get these short-term fuel trims where we want them to be that's the introduction what I'm doing why I'm doing it let's go into the office so you can see the uh, what I'm doing on the administrative side with regards to the data and how I'm making uh, changes to the ECU to get where we want to go so this is what I'm doing if you like on the administrative side so I've taken the logs from the uh, car scanner app and I've converted that into a diff format which uh, Logworks can understand. If you want to know how to do that, I'll, there's another video that I've done specifically on that subject. Link is in the video description. So this is what I get from those data logs. This is uh, the first or the second session of the data login. This is how it was and this is how it is now and this is the map that it's running at the moment so this is going to be whatever numbers you need on your piggyback ECU on this one like I said it's running rich so it's like negative everywhere and uh, I said that I wanted to get all these numbers within uh, plus or minus 5 preferably but plus or minus 10 would be fantastic as well so what we're looking for is that everything as close to green as possible. So you can see we've got yellows, oranges, light greens, got a red there. So this is what we started with. And then once we put these corrections in, this is what we get out. So basically everything, everything is within uh, plus or minus 10, which is ideal. This is what I want and this is acceptable. So if we look at the max values here for the both of them, you can see for, for this one, it was never having to add fuel, well, except in the uh, idle area, but that could be a variety of reasons for that. But generally, it's never having to add fuel. It's always taking away fuel. And if we look at the max values for this, we can see that we're getting closer to the middle of the adjustment range, which, which is what we want. We want the 
the ECU, the whole point of doing this according to the short fuel, short term fuel trims is we want the ECU to be able to have the maximum amount of adjustment that it needs to get the fuel in where it wants to be. So when it's always at zero, that means it's always trying to take away. It's not in the middle of its adjustment range. So we're like losing half of the adjustment range, if you like. And then if we look at the uh, adjusted one, we can still put a little bit of work into it to make these a little bit larger. But then again, when it gets the higher load and higher RPM, I don't want it to be running lean. So I'd prefer to just have it slightly plus. So these are the plus maximum uh, amount of uh, fuel that it's adding. And here are the minimums. So we can see that it's not having to use on this is the this is this map, the corrected map. So it's not having to use its full range of adjustment to get to the fueling that it needs to. Whereas on this one we can see that it's 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 having to go to my I think minus twenty five is the maximum amount of fuel it will take out. So we're maxing out the adjustment there. So maybe it would like to take out more fuel to get to the AFR target, but it's not able to. So by taking the math number away, by reducing the signal, we're putting it closer to the center of its adjustment range so it's able to get to the target AFR without using the maximum amount of adjustment that it has. So this is really great. This is you know mission accomplished so this is you know really good we're not maxing out the adjustment for it to take away fuel so it's it can do what it needs to do it's able to get the AFRs where it wants it it's not maxing out the adjustment like it is here so it could be still running rich here but it can't take out any more fuel because the maximum it's allowed to do is take out 25 hopefully that's making sense uh, and then if we look at the standard deviation we can see that it's quite a big variation well, a bigger variation than it is now. So now we've got it down to 6.5, 6.3. This is the deviation from the average. And here it was 11.6. Again, this is a good thing that it's more consistent. And if you just go back to the averages, we can see where it was and uh, where it is now. Even though these numbers look similar, like if we look at 100, it's only um, like 1% uh, better. And here it's like 1% more. But if we look at the uh, max and the minimums, we can see that we are starting to use you know, both sides of its adjustment. And if we look at the minimum here, it was running at 25, sometimes 22.7. And now it's only needing to use 17% like of its adjustment or 15% uh, of its adjustment to get to the desired AFR rather than getting close to its limit adjustment of 22.7. So generally, it's better. It's able to get to the AFRs that it needs to. Uh, and that is it. So that was it. I was just going out, doing a data log, getting this, see where we were. So if I still needed to take out more fuel, making these numbers bigger, uploading it to the ECU, going out, driving around again, doing another data log to see what effect that had, coming back, making the adjust, uh, coming back, having a look at the logs again and uh, seeing where we were. And just repeating that process over and over and over again till we got where we were so in the end i think it took about 11 uh, times 11 sessions if you like 11 data logs to uh, get it to this point if you had a dyno an engine dyno it'd be much easier you could just hold it at the uh, air fuel ratio that you wanted and that you could just make adjustments in real time if your ecu allows that and you could knock this out you know in uh, sort of probably less than half an hour something that took me you know 11 sessions of coming into the office going back out onto the road driving around to get a decent amount of uh, data and then repeating the process if you know what i mean so if you've got a dyno to do it that would definitely be the way to go but if you don't have a dyno this is uh, how you can do it with the with the road tuning if you like so i think i'm going to call it uh, a day there with the adjustments i might i might uh take a little bit more out in this area here oh sorry in this area here just to try and get it um like closer to minus five but as i said the ecu is not having to use its full range of adjustment to get to its desired afr so it's not a um it's not a massive priority whereas here it was i mean we're getting up to 22.7 23.4 it can't do any more adjustment that's so we're right at the ragged edge of what it can compensate for and, and now we are now we're not 
and that's the video guys that is how i uh, scale the mouse sensor it's a bit of like i said a bit of a long drawn out process if you don't have a dyno but if you don't have a dyno you can still do it on the road it's just a little bit of uh it's a lot of extra work having to do uh, the data logs of the obd converting the csv into a diff file so logworks can understand it making the adjustments going back out again Please vote on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. Very important that. And hit the notification button so you know when the videos are uploaded. Uh, videos getting uploaded every Sunday morning. Uh, that's it for now. Look after yourselves and I'll see you again in the next video.